you have to leave the world behind and you have to understand the time that we living in now, not the time that we was living in. There was a time when, you know, you have a car, you have uh, the American dream, as you call it, right? The American dream is this thing where, you know, you're supposed to have in your imagination that the ultimate zenith of success looks like a picket fence um, house, right? This family, a boy and a girl, and, you know, you have a college degree and you're successful, blah, blah, blah. That's no longer even the world that we live in anymore. And that movie kept going about that as well. It kept talking about a world that we don't even live in anymore. It's not sage, this is Palo Santo. I like the vibes of the Palo Santo, me personally. And I was on this panel at Revolt, right? I was on this panel at Revolt. And at the panel at Revolt, we was having a conversation about being equally yoked because women have it in their mind. Um, a lot of new age women have it in their mind that they're making all of this money and it should matter more that, you know, you got a, you got a house, you got a degree, right? You got your nice car and, you know, you may feel that you have now reached this pinnacle of success that is supposed to matter to men. And the reality of it is most men don't care. The reason that men don't care is because all those things are yours and it doesn't contribute to a man's life whatsoever, particularly. If you have your house, a man doesn't want to move in with you. If you have your job, which is great to have your own job and have your own money, but that is money that is particularly going to be spent by you and for you. So man cares more so about, you know, his own things that he has, right? And how he can use those things to take care of the people that he loves and the people around him, right? But it almost seems that that type of manhood is fading away. There was a, a if you watch the movie, as I'm going back and forth and talking about both, so you have to kind of keep up. If you watch the movie, in the movie, there was this uh, reference to this movie called Friends. I mean, the show Friends. And the black girl has said something. She said, it's almost nostalgic for a time that never existed. And it almost seems like a lot of times that a lot of the ideas and concepts that we once knew about no longer exist. The idea of what a man is, the idea of what a woman is, even the idea of what friends are and what relationships are in today's time. It almost seems like that doesn't even exist anymore, right? The You have to update your standards, right? And that's really one of the keys to this whole thing. You know, for me, when I say I don't have a car, I wasn't saying that I can't travel around. I may be saying that the new standard is I may have a driver. When I say I don't have a job, it doesn't mean that I don't work. It could be the new standard is I have a skill or I have a business, right? When I say I don't have a degree, it doesn't mean that I'm not intelligent, right? It doesn't mean that I'm not well studied. It doesn't mean that I'm not a learned man, right? Uh, I'm not a researcher or a scholar by any means, right? It means that I may have not went and got an institutional degree and went into debt for that particular education, but it just in the scales of how you measure value allows you to live in the time and understand the value and the measurement of the time we're living in. Because you may find a man with those things, but those things can be outdated. Who cares? Right? You may find a man walk up to you and say, hey, I got a, I got a car or I got a degree. I got a house or he may or whatever it may be. And none of that could matter in this time. Like, no, nah, I can say I don't have a car. You know what I'm saying? You can be asking me uh, and, and, and looking for a standard that doesn't even fit and apply. You'd be like, oh, you ain't got no car, you ain't got no job. I'm like, nope, nope. You ain't got a degree. I'm like, nope. But that's not a measurement of my intelligence and or my ability and my capabilities in the world, nor does it's going to give you a measurement on whether we're equal. And because you have those things, has no, there's no way in the world that I'm going to measure you by those things to say that we're equal. Right. That's not how I'm going to see it. You can have millions. It doesn't mean that we're equal. There are different 
you have to like spice it down, right? You know, and I think that men and women no longer have the art of knowing how to choose a partner because the thing about it is, is that what we forgot is that even choosing somebody was not about some little list that we have. It was about the connections between not only you and that person, right, but you and your family, right? Your family will help you choose a partner in many different situations in time. They will suggest somebody, somebody that can get along with everybody. Oftentimes, we want this fake Disney, Romeo, Juliet, rebellious love. I want somebody that the family don't like. If y'all think that they don't want, I still want them. This is my business over here. American culture has become this individual narcissistic list of things that serve your desires regardless of anybody in your life cares or agrees with it. So it starts off with friction instead of flow. And that's not how you start to build. You want to have children with that person. You're going to need, you know what I'm saying, your, your in-laws. You're going to need the grandmas. You're going to need people to help you take care. You need your community, right? You know what I'm saying? You need you got to you want to start a family with somebody. You don't need the community to help take care of that family. You feel me like it's supposed to be a community thing. Like this is a person that's adding in to the group. They add in to the community. They add in to the tribe. So they like, "Okay, what you bring to the tribe?" But uh, uh, of you know, in the in the beautiful progress that women have made in their pursuit of their ideas, their skills, you know, their successes, what we found is that a lot of people or a lot of women didn't realize that they're going to come with these problems. Comes with the same problems that men have, right? A man that works all the time doesn't always have what? Time. This time decays uh, parts of yourself, right? We talked about this in the latest episode with Dr. Sirius B. It's called, he's called it the uh, colony collapse disorder. Right. And the colony collapse disorder was when you stop listening to the queens and it goes into the money chasing era. And then it goes into the logic of the man, because money is a very logical pursuit. Right. Business is a very logical pursuit. Right. So once you do that, what happens that the feminine aspect of the world dies off when everybody's chasing money because everybody's in a masculine and everybody in a bag and everybody getting to the money and everybody measuring things by very logical systems. So the intuitive feminine with the art right side of life decreases. Right. So now you're not taking that divine request or that divine order and structure Right. Or instruction. Right. From that feminine side of the brain of the world anymore. If you look at bees, bees follow the queens. The queens be like, let's do this. The men be like, man, I'm going to do this on my own. It's the logic. No, we have to have both things in pursuing in order for things to flow. Right. When you want to do things just because that's when you start to find collapse. Everything has to find an order. And we live in a time where people follow you know, the emotions, of course, more than they follow the logic in a sense. Not when it comes to their career, yeah, they follow the logic, but when it comes to information that they receive from society, right? The way people get triggered by posts, the comment section, the comment section is like the comment section is like it should be your mirror. The things that you type let you know your issues and your problems. You go on somebody post and be like, no, but this, this, this. You're not talking to that person. You're talking to yourself. Your emotions are running rapid. You're trying to justify an idea that you hold. You're trying to justify an action that you do. You're trying to justify a belief system. You're trying to justify your problems. You're trying to justify being a victim. All of these different things. <laughs> Right. It's, 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 it's your issues, not the speaker's issue. Here you are yelling at a soundbite of, of a clip of something that happened in the world. You know what I'm saying? And you're yelling at it. That's psychotic almost. You got to think about that for a second. If you don't have the ability to draw back and to think and to comprehend and to say, oh, okay, I understand what you're trying to say. Let me add on top of this versus everything has to be a tug and war. You already allow these women so much into your logic. And this is why nobody can get along with you. 
is because you always want to fight instead of flow. No man wants to deal with the logical battle with his woman all day long. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to deal with that. It's this, it's that and the third because it's like we already deal with that within our own selves, arriving to points and conclusions of thoughts to get to right enlightenment. No, we want the we want the vibes from you. We want the feels from you. You know what I'm talking about? Like you know, we want the energy. We don't need you to goddamn be trying to battle every single second. Cause here's the thing. Shout out to Blue Pill in the building. Your triggers are not my responsibility. I, I'm going to tell you this, and this is something you might not like. It is actually the world's job to trigger you. You're supposed to be triggered. I'm supposed to trigger you. I'm not trying to not trigger you because you just go about your day if you're not triggered. Right? Your triggers are mechanisms of responses that let you know where you need to work at. It lets you know your weaknesses. Right? When you get over something, you're no longer triggered. So it's letting you know, oh, this is what I need to work on. This is where I need to heal at. This is where my issues at. This is where my problems at. There's nobody to walk around that. You think people are supposed to not trigger you? No, you're supposed to work on that aspect of yourself.